from my experience, the ball goes flat for everyone and many of these athletes aren't prepared. The biggest thing for college athletes that I've seen and that I've experienced is really maintaining that scholarship. You know, there's no such thing as a four-year scholarship. I never knew that before. As far as the college process, it would be a benefit if coaches were able to educate me on the process. So that's something that I'm finding out that Hey we're everyone, to welcome do to well. I'm the CEO show. I, I am your co-host Eric Robinson, the AKA incident. the Soul Motivator, and today I am joined by my co-host Mr. James Burrell, AKA the Professor. Woo, ladies and gentlemen, today we have a dynamite show for y'all as always, and we got a special guest. Today we're going to talk be talking about team building. Building a team, James. I think the secret sauce the sauce is coming. Not the mumbo sauce. The secret sauce. The secret sauce. Even though that mumbo sauce ain't too... I don't know. There's a secret. I don't know what's in that mumbo sauce. But we're going to catch this show. Ladies and gentlemen, what I want y'all to do right now, like, share, comment. Because this show, it's not only going to bless them, James, in their business. Mm -hmm. It's going to bless some people in your life. In your lifestyle. Really. We're going to be breaking down team building. And you got teams in your family, teams in your household, teams in your business. We're going to give you the ins and out of team building, which is probably going to put some money, some cheddar. It's going to be, this is going to be an impact show. The bag. That bag. This is going to show that's going to impact your life. So right after this commercial, we want you to like, share, comment, tell everybody. Come back. We got a special guest that's going to blow your mind. Yes, sir. Coming to you live. Right after this commercial, don't go nowhere. Welcome to I Am The CEO Show. I am your co-host, Eric Robinson, a.k.a. The Soul Motivator. And today, I'm joined by my co-host... Mr. James Burrell, a.k.a. The Professor. And ladies and gentlemen, today, we are joined by a special guest sitting right here between us. None other than Mr. Isaiah Robinson. Isaiah, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for having me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if y'all can see up on the screen, Isaiah Robinson is a student athlete, Isaiah. Yes, um, sir, at with Hampton University. Hampton University. Is H-U. That, is that the real H-U? Which is the, yes. Who's the real H-U? Hampton's the real H-U. <laughs> now, I know y'all had a battle in, in Chicago mm -hmm. um, between the battles of the H-U. Who won that battle, though? Uh, we won that battle uh, by more than 21 points, actually. Woo! More than 21 points. So, it's safe to say that Hampton is the real H-U. Yes, yeah, sir. Don't well, sound too much like a battle to me. That was a <laughs> butt kick. So, Isaiah, we're going to be talking about business throughout the show and team building. And I know you have a um, wealth of knowledge in building a team um, throughout the years. So, I want let's, let's talk about that. Um, James, and I know you, you've been a sports. So, you, I'm amongst two athletes, um, collegiate athletes. But I want to, before we go there, let's debunk. And I want to hear your answer, Professor, and I want to hear Isaiah's athlete, uh, answer. How much, James, has team building in sports and college prepared you for team building in life? Oh, man, I, I always attribute to um, sports as as a reflection of life. Okay. And, and a lot of times the same lessons that you learn being on a team, you carry that same lessons over in life. Mm -hmm. And And... Sports is a is a unique place where people come in an environment where you don't choose that you don't choose the people, mm -hmm. okay. But and you still have to learn how to 
work and thrive in an environment where you don't know anyone in the beginning. Right. And then within a couple of months, those same people become like your family. Like, mm. within a short period of time. So, team building is something that, from being on a team, it, it gives you it gives you kind of an advantage, I would okay. say. Like, kind of a, a, a head start, mm. I would like to say. Okay. And things that you can use later on in life. Okay, cool. I, I like that. I like that. So, Isaiah, I'm going to ask you that same question. Um, if we can, can we get the slide with um, Isaiah? I, like, I want to give him... His, his, his credit. We can get this slide. We don't mind advancing one slide over. Um, talk to our producers. Uh, but Isaiah, I'm going to ask you that same question too. Mm -hmm. Team building. How much has it been, do you see right now, I know you got your regular life outside of sports, but how much has being able to build teams affected you or helped you? Have you seen a, a has that been a piece or that skill or you just, it, or it's really not irrelevant. It's a huge part, actually, because just going in within the team and mm -hmm. meeting everybody, you build a family for life, just outside okay. of sports and outside of everything. So say you need help in the future or anything, the teammate that you had and bonded with, you have their help for life. And also, just the the skill, the skills you need to do for football and. The real world is actually the same. It's a lot of the same things, like waking up in the morning, getting dressed on time, being ready, being somewhere at the time you need to be. That's mm -hmm. a huge skill that athletes, that some people really struggle with, but being an athlete, you can't struggle with that because that will hurt the whole team. Also, leadership skills is a bit, very important skill that you learn throughout playing a sport because you have to be responsible for yourself and other people to get the job done to win the games. So I would say there's a lot of things that go into playing sports that affects the real life and going on for the rest of your life. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad you mentioned that, Isaiah. Now, I, I know a little bit about your background, and you've been in positions, even in high school, where you have to, you've been, and James talked about that, you've been in situations where you just had to go to a whole new environment. Mm -hmm. And I know in high school you had to change new environments twice. You went from... Three times. Three times. You had to change totally new environments. And when I say new environments, for those who don't know, you've had to, like, hours away from your home. Mm -hmm. Whole different, totally different cities. How how was you able to now, being a quarterback, how was you able to come in and bond in jail? Was there anything that you thought to myself, yourself going into those, that situation I need to do or prepare myself for, or is it just comes natural to you? The first thing I think about going in them situations is I need to learn who I'm dealing with. I need to get a bonding relationship with the team. And after that gets a part of it, you have to just, how can I lead this team? How can I lead these guys to put themselves in a better position than they were last year? And also, I have to build a relationship with the coaches staff, the people above me. So I want them to I want to know what they think when I'm going through everything, and that's how you really being playing quarterback is basically being the coach on the field, also. So that's one key thing I really try to do. It also comes natural because I've always been a pre people's person. Okay. But that's my thinking process of going into something. Wow! Wow! Um, I'm gonna ask you one more follow I see James over there. Um, let's talk about building it. Was, you, was fear, like going into a new environment? I mean, yeah. was mm -hmm. fear ever? I mean, one time you, you you went from into a whole new city, into Baltimore, and your school was at high school was in the middle of the city. Or let's talk about this. You even then went to University of Maine, which is way far in the cold, mm -hmm. and then transferred to Hampton University last year. Is fear part of that? There is fear sometimes, not knowing what you're going into or not even knowing what it's going to be like when you get there. So being recruited and just going through the recruiting process, coach is going to tell you what you want to hear and everything that basically you want to hear to get you there. But when you actually get there, a lot of things are different. So that's mm. really a fear. And also just being around a new environment, meeting new people, uh, from different races, from different ages, that's also a fear. But once you get there and settled in, the fear starts to go away a little bit and you start to feel like home. Mm. So, so Isaiah, let me ask you this. What was the transition like leading in high school where you had probably, you know, 
a different type of bond of relationship with guys on your high school team. Mm -hmm. Then when you went to college, these are guys coming from different cities, different backgrounds, different, you know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. what was the transition for you in leading in high school so now I gotta lead these these strange grown men now. Mm-hmm. What what was the what, if you notice the transition? Mm-hmm. Could you explain what that was? Yes, I actually think the trans transition is moving different. Actually, moving like a grown man, knowing you have responsibilities, knowing you have people, other grown men looking up to you, ready to lead them. I feel like that's very important. So you just gotta move different. Watch what you say, how you act, how you interact with people. And also just understanding, like, you really have people watching over you, people that's 21 and up that got kids, and they're really trying to make a career out of this. So you got to realize this is a career for you and the people around you. So I would say that's a big difference from high school to college. And also, I can't reiterate this in much, like, really spending time with the coaches because you have to let – you have to show the coaches that – you are on the same level as them and that you are trying to get to where they got to and that's going to the next level so that's a big difference i would say Woo! james i i, I hope y'all caught that um you're saying you're going from high school now I'm, I'm a student athlete now i'm going with these coaches and the people above me my leaders they have to res- you have to gain their respect that I'm on the kind of same peer level now. I'm no longer just a little kid being coached by my high school coach. And so I'm a grown man being coached by other grown men. Um, how do you go about developing then that, that, that transition, that level of respect? I mean, because a lot of people don't understand. You're leaving your environment from home, and now you're going to a, a whole to no, another envelop, environment. And then you got to now how to develop and gain respect from other people. Um, what are some of the things that you did to help gain that respect other than communication? I mean, is it work ethic? What do you kind of do? Work ethic. Um, being a quarterback, you have to be in the film room 24-7, always watching film, always picking up things you can get better at, and even watching yourself because everybody makes mistakes. But the key thing is you got to face the mistakes that you made and just won't let it happen again. So being in the film room, showing coaches that you really try. You're really showing effort into your craft. That's a big part of it. And also, maybe just going down and having a cup of coffee. See, me personally, I don't <laughs> like coffee. Okay. So I'll say have tea with the coaches. Just talk to them, get to know them, know their background, know their history, and just see what they think about things. Mm. Ooh. So my, my next question is this. Ben, that you play the position of quarterback, mm-hmm. and everybody – looks at the quarterback as the as the leader. Mm-hmm. But you've been in a situation where it was multiple quarterbacks that play right. at multiple times. So how was it sharing, the res- ha- having a relationship where you had to share the responsibility of being a leader? Mm. So sharing the responsibility. See, I also came in a position as playing backup and – I just learned some things from playing backup and also being a starter. So say if you're the starter and you go down, you still have to support the backup just like how he is the starter. And I really realized that. And also just if you go down and the next person comes up, you just always have to have that leader mentality and also have to, how can I say this? Also have to have a leader mentality on and off the field. So by me going to different places and learning from different people, I picked up a lot of different leadership skills from each one of the quarterbacks that I've been around. And everybody leads by different types, but I would say I would lead by example and how I use my voice. But by having multiple leaderships on a team, it can only get better. It never can get worse by having a lot of leaders on the team. So did you have to find yourself at times – being the follower? Yes. you. A lot of times, to be a leader, you once have to be a follower. Mm. You got to learn from other people in a higher position than you. So I would say yes. All right. I'm James, y'all. Let's, 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 let's talk real talk. We're talking real talk. That's a good point because we're talking about building a team and being that leader. Mm-hmm. If Have there been times, and I don't want to try to call you out, 
where maybe you're not the starter and you feel that like I'm just as good as the starter, how do you how do you then accept the role or how do you go about still leading when you're not the starter? Um, how do you how do you control that ego part of it? It's really, but I've been recently talking to God a lot, man. I was really building a relationship relationship with God and my family and my peers around me. And I just know it's always going to be a time and God has a time and place for everything. Even though you may not seem like it's that time or place, he has a reason for everything he does. And just knowing that where you at in your position right now is wherever you are in your position, just know that sometimes you have to be there just to learn different things. And... When you learn different things, it will always propel you to go forward in life and just understand the next opportunity that you will have when you go there. So do you prepare like a backup or do you, do you got to prepare like a starter? You always got to prepare like a starter because you never know when your number is going to get called throughout any position because okay. football is a very physical sport. People go down like that. And you just always got to be the next man up, next man ready, no matter what. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a commercial. After this commercial, we're going to come back and talk some more team building. I don't know if y'all realize, he's been dropping some science. James, I'm That's learning. Sure. That's sure. I'm over here learning. After this commercial, don't go nowhere. Coming right back at you. Welcome to I'm the CEO Show. I am your co-host, Eric Robinson, a.k.a. The Soul Motivator. And today I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. James Burrell, a.k.a. The Professor. And if you've been watching, ladies and gentlemen, we've been joined by this young man, um, Isaiah Robinson, yes, quarterback at Hampton, the Hampton University. Thank yes, you. Isaiah, welcome. Thank you for coming to the show, sir. No problem. Thank you for having me. Isaiah, you've been dropping some jewels. And we're going to help people continue about this team doing. But James, right here, we've got Understanding the Ships. Understanding the different ships. Um, and by that, we're talking about relationships, friendships, and partnerships. This team building, understanding the ships are is huge when you're talking about a team building. And Isaiah, I'm listening to you talk and talking about how you've been in different situations, different schools, and different teams. Um, in your head, if you talk about the relationships, the friendships, and the partnerships, do you find that there's different ships on your team in the sports? Yes, it definitely is. And the funny thing is about them ships, they come at different times and different moments. So wow. relationships, you have to build a relationship with your team. Friendships, you also build friendships, and that's built in relationships. But partnership is a big one. Hmm. Partnership is you have to, for football, you and your teammates are trying to get to the same goal, no matter how hard it takes, no matter what it takes. So sometimes you got to get in your um, friends, uh, but just to <laughs> get, prove the point and let them know, like, this is serious. This is a partnership. We trying to get to the same goal. We trying to get to the same place, and we just got to make it happen. That goes into another way to put up there, leadership, the Professor. And I'm hearing you say, Isaiah, as a leader, sometimes when you have a friendship and a relationship with people, is it, do you find sometimes it's tough to hold them accountable for the partnership? Or are you naturally able to do that? It is tough sometimes because, because that is your friend. You have built a brotherly relationship with them. So when they, when you see them going off the wrong track and just not doing anything, not doing the best that they can do, 
it's hard sometimes because you see the friendship in them, but you also see the partnership in them. So you just really have to have a fine line between the two. But that's mm. also hard. Yeah. James, I'm going to ask you about that, that question. I mean, I'm going to go back to you, James, with sports. You know, I'm thinking that friendship, relationship, and partnership. Yeah. We got a partnership to go to the same goal. But what happens when me and my partner, we, we both want to start, we starters. And now it's the coach take my, my, my man out. And now I got a new partner in, in there. But my friendship is, have you had that happen where? It's it's tough because, like, in, in the way that I say it, the partnership is more with the university okay. than with the team. Mm-hmm. The, the friendships and relationships build is inside more of the team unit, mm-hmm. but the partnerships are more outside of that because un- unlike high school and prior to, now there's some skin in the game involved. There's, there's some money involved mm-hmm. on all levels. Okay. Right? The coaches are being paid professionally. Mm-hmm. Okay? <laughs> all across the board. Yeah. Right? So the partnerships... Are, to me, is at the highest level mm. because what's and I'm glad you brought that point up because what's going to happen is people come in as individuals. Like you come in on the individual scholarship, mm-hmm. I came in on the individual scholarship. So yeah. now my friend, mm-hmm. we may come to the school as friends, mm-hmm. but we're not partners. Mm. We're teammates, Woo. but we're not partners. Ah. Mm. So when that, when that comes up, when now another guy, I may be the quarterback throwing to my receiver, which is my best friend, he could bumps down the second string, a new guy. I have to build a relationship with this new guy and not just because he's my friend. So, so, so it's all different levels working at, at, at one time. So I'm on, it, that, on a collegiate level and above. Okay. Does, you, does that make sense to you guys? I mean, you had this mm-hmm. conversation. I'm, I was thinking, man, you got the partnership with your teammates. You work with kind of green. But out here, it's a relationship. The partnership is with the coaches. The coaching in the university. Mm-hmm. So you sign a partnership agreement with the university. And regardless of those, are indiv- I got an individual partnership. Yeah. And when those players move, those players change, I got a, the relationship. Can the relationship, you ever had the relationship get affected, Isaiah? When the, when the, player the piece of the puzzle move has that ever affected in your relationship or you've been able to maintain those i was able to maintain them but people do feel a certain way when it happens mm-hmm. yes most definitely yeah yeah and, uh, and, and sometimes a lot i know you've seen this I, um, a lot isaiah where it will have a major impact mm-hmm. like if if i've seen guys everything's all good when you're the starter right. but then now you're in a different role and 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 people treat you differently. Hey, mm-hmm. I, I'm sure you've seen that. Yeah. When you're the starter, you know, hey buddy, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. But then when you're not the starter, they're like, oh, how you doing, Zach? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so I, I can I see the impact on the re, what the relationships could bring. Mm-hmm. But again, at the same time, that doesn't change the partnership. Mm-hmm. Everyone's still there to fulfill their obligation for the scholarship. Right. And I think a lot of times, Eric, that gets see, in high school is blended. It's no, it's no scholarship mm-hmm. involved, so you feel more intertwined. But then you realize it's more of an individual thing. So, so it's kind of hard to lead a group of individuals. Mm-hmm. Then okay. you, you follow what I'm saying? A yeah. collective of individuals that's a team, that rather than the high school team that was just. We all buddy, buddy. We in this mm-hmm. as brothers. More does, does that right. make sense? What I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It, it creates a whole different dynamic. And and me watching you change those those roles. I've been I've been saying you you've done a great job of that mm-hmm. because you've been at all different roles. You've mm-hmm. been the starter. You've been the backup. You've had to uh, uh, um, shift schools. I'm mm-hmm. um, transfer and, and 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 going through that. If you can just just touch on me because I don't think a lot of people understand how tough the process is to transfer right to a different school so the process is very tough uh for the ncaa uh you have to set out a whole football season just to transfer for the next school if you want to get eligible to play again and also just besides the ncaa just transferring in general you have to meet new people meet new coaches meet new players meet new Regular students, it's very tough and it's hard, but just understanding 
understanding who you hang around, who you surround yourself with is a big part of everything you do. You want to hang around people that has the same goal as you, the same mindset as you, and just trying to get to where you want to go. So coming from a people, anything with college is a huge distraction. So you really have to learn to minimize your distractions. Let's talk, okay, you talk distractions. Mm-hmm. I went down to the Hunt Hampton homecoming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a difference than, <laughs> I was at the main homecoming. Mm-hmm. It's a difference between Hampton's homecoming and main homecoming. Huge difference. How do you, how do you, how do you, how do you weed through the distraction? Because there was some, there could be, you could be distracted. Mm-hmm. It's really just know where you're trying to get to and Having really having tunnel vision is a big thing, and a huge big thing. It also is sur- who the people you surround yourself with. You surround yourself around good people with the same goals as you. They'll make sure you don't slip up. They'll make sure that you you know what you came here to do and you know what you're trying to do. Okay, uh, you you said that as in, and you made it seem like it's so so easy. Okay, and I, I want to break that down because. You're coming to a new school. Mm-hmm. I'm coming to a new environment. I got a job to do. And this can help some of the people out there. I got a job to do. I got a, sign, a mission to do. But I'm at a new environment. How do you know who the right people? And do one, how do you figure out the right people? And two, you talk about if you know what you came to do. And I don't know if everybody has that goal. No, they don't know if they, everybody knows what they came to do. How do you... <laughs> How does Isaiah Robinson go about knowing what he came to do? Let's start there. How do you go about knowing what you came here to do? Well, what I came here to do is I'm trying to go to the NFL. So that's my number one priority and my number one goal. So I also try to surround myself with people who's also trying to go to the NFL. And also not who's trying to go to the NFL, but who has the ability to go to the NFL. Because there's a lot of people that want to go to the NFL but don't have the ability or don't have the work ethic. So I'll say that's the first thing you have to do to find somebody, just like to find somebody that you wanna hang around with is see how they work ethic, see how they are on the field, see how they are off the field, in the classroom, and just in their regular day lifestyle because okay. you can tell who wants it and who doesn't. Mm. So I'll say that's a big that's Okay, a big. I, I like that. now. Um, I want to ask you this question, James. Me and Isaiah was talking on the way in. He was saying like, and we, that's one of the next segment. But the, how do you go about the relationships and the friendships and the partnerships, understanding where somebody is? I, I'm a business. I'm out here. I'm building my business. How do I know these? How do I define these roles? It's 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 tough because a lot of some it depend it, especially with with business owners, right? I see some of the lines are crossed because you start small, you start internal, you start with your family. So mm-hmm. some of the relationships and partnerships and friendships can all overlap each other. So sometimes you, it gets blurry. Okay. And, you know what I mean? Like say, for example, you, your son, your wife, mm-hmm. they're not going to stop being your son and your wife. But then it's, it's different roles that, okay, here, this is a different relationship, mm-hmm. okay, than over here. But I still got to see you later on at the okay. dinner table. Yeah. And, and it was funny because I, I was just watching um basketball the other day, and Austin Rivers and Doc Rivers, they went against each other. Mm-hmm. And he got his dad kicked out with a tech. He's like, see you, see you, Dad. <laughs> but, you know, and on the way it was like, call me. We, you know, we'll do dinner. Mm-hmm. But it's it's because he understands that, listen, I have a job to do. Okay. He has a job to do. Mm-hmm. Okay? So that's the, you understand, the really what the relationship is. Okay? okay? Even though they're more than friendships, right? Mm-hmm. But do they necessarily have a partnership in that scenario over here? Mm-hmm. No. But then when they go home, it's the ultimate partnership, father and son. Okay. You, you follow me? So mm-hmm. the lines can be blurry. So it's really no, you follow me? It's, it's yeah. Sometimes it's hard to say, this person is strictly over here as my mm. friend, and you can't be my partner. Mm. No, those lines get blurred a lot, mm. yeah. but they do. They do have to be defined. So when they shuffle it around, okay, I'm. I have my CEO hat today on. Okay, I may have my smart jock hat on another day. Yeah, 
I might have both of them on at the same time. So they, they all can get blurry. Yeah. So I, I think it's kind of hard for just to, to, to define it. It, it, it kind of depends on where you are. As you grow mm -hmm. and strangers come into the fold, then it's a different dynamic. But when you're dealing with your family unit, those lines are going to intertwine a lot. Mm. And Isaiah, you mentioned that earlier about when you start a team, you start to see the relationships and, and then they come friendships and mm -hmm. you get the partnerships. Um, how have you been able to manage through that? Um, do you keep your relationships and do you have some people who are part relationships and not separate from football or all the sports? How do, how do you manage that? Um, Big question. Really, it's hard to manage actually. Because I love the honesty. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I love that. I love that honesty part. It really is hard to manage because you do all have a. Are you asking me my friendships within the football team or just outside? Football team and outside. So with the football team, it's hard. But having good teammates that all has the same goal and trying to get to where they're trying to get to. Sometimes they just want to play the role and. Being on a uh, team, it's no I in team like people always say. So just having the ability to, if you're not playing, if you're not starting, have the ability and the teamwork to actually still get to where you want to go and still get to the championship is honestly every team goal. Okay. And for the team, and for my regular outside friends. Yeah, let's talk, let's talk about outside friends. Let's, yeah, let's, let's get there. Let's mm -hmm. get there. We, so, we, we, want, we want to know the nitty gritty. So the regular outside friends, I really try to surround myself with people that want to do something with their lives and not just sit at home and not do anything while they're at this age. People, I want to surround myself with entrepreneurs. I want to hang around with um, people that's going to school for a reason and they're trying to make something with that. Now, do you see people go to school? Um, who really don't have a, a, a reason. They just here in school. Do you mm -hmm. see that? Yes, I see that a lot actually. Okay. And how do you how do how do you separate? How, what's, what's the what, how do you I know you have a big network of people who like to be around you. You know, mm -hmm. for those who don't know, you you're, you're kind of a popular person. So how do you how do you separate those friendships, partnerships, relationships, or define how far somebody goes or how much you share? How do you how do you still be Popular because you're the quarterback, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. How do you still be popular and accessible sometimes as you are, but still keep those boundaries? Just keep people at a distance, actually. So you don't have to just not talk to them, but just keep them at a distance. Don't always hang around, hang around them. Don't always do the things that they do, but keep them at a distance. So I'll say that's the big thing because you also being a quarterback. You also have people that is like you and wants to be around you because the things you do and the things you do off the field and mm -hmm. just your ability to talk to people. But you just got to keep people at a distance. That makes sense. I'm hearing you. But it's not that easy. Yeah. How do you keep people at a distance? That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I hear you. But how do you keep people? At, how do you how do you keep people at a distance? Um. So say. If I'm over at somebody's house, okay, I try not to stay there for so long. I try to go over their house, do what I have to do, hang out for a little bit, have free time. But then, after two hours, three hours, that's when it's time for me to go. I don't like being at a scene too long, and I don't like being somewhere too long unless See, it's with the right people. That's what I'm talking about. Cause I, I I've noticed that sometimes, <clears throat> um, you know, sometimes I'll say, hey man, I'll, I'll call for you, you, you in the room. And I'm like, well, you're not out partying. You're not out doing these things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I know sometimes, and I'm here, I, I see what you're doing. But a lot of times, James, as we start to move, people, especially talking to entrepreneurs and business owners, you got to get out there and network. But then, as he said, you got to be learning how to, how to work within that network. Sometimes you can't stay too long. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, a, that's important. And the, the question I was going to have, Isaac, the um, question I was going to ask you is, the biggest thing I've seen with, mm -hmm. with athletes is not knowing how to move. Mm -hmm. And 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 when I say not knowing how to move, I mean like not being in control of your environment. Mm -hmm. And it's a slippery slope for a lot of us because we have our guys, you know, I think you, you, 
no, you're not gonna say my man's in them, mm-hmm. right? See, your man's in them can <laughs> can have you in the in a lot of situations because everyone's not an athlete. Right. Like all your friends aren't athletes, right? Right. All your friends are not going to the NFL, mm-hmm. right? All your friends are not playing quarterback, right? Right. But it doesn't mean that they're not your friends. They, mm-hmm. they, that's that's your man, right? Right. He can't throw football worth nothing. But that's your guy. Right. Right? Yeah. I had the same kind of guy at every game, it, cheering us on, but scared to t- come out and try out for the team. Mm-hmm. But he's always with us, always around, fun guy to be around. So I'm sure that happens in football mm-hmm. same way, right? And when I say know how to move, being an athlete, and, and you know, like, if something hits the headlines, it's – not going to be your mans and them right. on the front page. It's going to be you. you. Mm-hmm. So how do you control your environment to minimize the things that can go wrong when you're hanging out with your mans and them? Well, first, you have to tell your friends that don't put me in any situation that will put me on the headlines, put me on the news, put a bad... Put yourself in a bad position. So you have to have the talk. Like, yeah. you really have to have that conversation with them? Mm-hmm. Or do you assume that they because they see you, they should already know that? Or you really have to have you that man to man? Give me the next slide. Y'all talking about something. If you can give me the next slide right real quick. Yeah. But, yeah. That's so, an Yeah, I, 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 want, I want that question. Because this is what we're talking about. Partnership agreements. But it could be relationship agreements. And I think that's what y'all are talking about. Yeah, mm-hmm. the agreements. Yeah. So you're, I'm hearing you saying you got to you have that you got to have that agreement conversation. Mm-hmm. I would say your friends they're going to know not to put you in a bad position, but you also do have to tell them to have that conversation with them because they're not trying to get to the same place you're trying to get to. So if you basically if you want to be around me. You can't put me in that type of position. So you really have to have a man to man and talk with them about it. Because like you said, some things go down, they're not gonna be in the same position as you're gonna be. Say a big fight breaks out with between anyone. They're not their name's not gonna be in the paper, yours is. And say you see people fighting, they're not gonna worry about your friends. They're gonna see you fighting. So you really do have to have a man to man conversation with them. Sit down and talk to them. How much of that conversation do you have to have with yourself, Isaiah? How much of it is really I have to start studying? How much time and effort do you pick put into studying how people move, how to position yourself? Mm, I honestly, I say learning from you is how I study. It just talking to you and uh, how to move certain ways and certain certain things. Seeing things that everybody can't see. And for those of y'all who don't know, I have actually actually, actually know this young man, Isaiah. Right? We, I've been calling him Isaiah like I don't know him, but he's actually my son. So <laughs> so he says learning from you and watching you. So yeah, this is this is a father and son moment. But it's not just a father and son moment, because this is a part we we talk about a partnership and friendship. So we're not he's now I'm I'm interviewing him for your for your own merit. Mm-hmm. And not just because you're my son. And that's why I'm I'm wondering, like, how do you I, I watch you, and I don't want to put the words for you, but I want people to get this. I never really, really paid attention to just watching how I moved. Mm-hmm. That's not something that we haven't really talked about until now. You just shared that with me. Mm-hmm. Um, but understanding, ladies and gentlemen, when you're talking about this partnership, and I'll just add this, you really have to understand and limit. And sometimes under you got to study how to move. You sometimes got to study other people. Mm-hmm. And watch how they move. You gotta study other people and watch their agreements, watch their partnerships. And sometimes you gotta ask people. You gotta be willing to say, "Hey, you know what, James? What's going on? How do you position yourself? How do you watch out for these things?" Sometimes somebody will bring wisdom to you. But let me ask you this question, Isaiah: As a leader, as somebody building a team, who's responsible for this agreement? Do you take this on myself? It's for it's my man's and them. They need to look out for me. Or are you taking the ownership that I need? I know I need to go. Who's 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 responsible for that for that partnership agreement? It's a mixture of both, actually. Okay. Because you yourself, you have to know if you have this situation, you have to get out that situation yourself, and you have to see it yourself. Okay. But also, if you're 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 supposed to be your man's, correct? Mm-hmm. And they're supposed to have the best interest for you, so they also have to see they also have to see it themselves too. 
Mm. So they also have to know the knowledge that, hey, this guy is special. This guy has this guy is doing something in the public light. Like we know we can't ruin that. So that also comes from the, your man's and them. Your man's and them are supposed to be by your side, supposed to be helping you throughout everything. So mm. if they're really your friends and really your man's and them, they won't put you in that position. You know, we had we we had this uh, um, a guest on, and they're the owners of the Washington Fusion. And they were partners, James. I'm kind of making me think about that. And they talked about that being vulnerable as as a leader, as a CEO, being vulnerable because you can't do it all on your own. You know, and I'm I like your answer, Isaiah. It's not like I can't just say I'm the own I, I'm controlling my own fate. I got to be a little bit vulnerable. And the partners has a level of, of responsibility. And I got to kind of have an agreement that it's not just a one sided agreement. I got to have an agreement with my partners, and I got to trust that they are holding the end of the agreement. What's your take on that, James? Yeah, it's 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 a lot of vulnerability in, involved in that. Um and it and, and it it reflects the level of leadership as well because to to get that to get to that place, you have to have somebody in your ear. It, it, okay. it's just, you're not gonna have it all. So mm-hmm. it's it's gonna it's gonna come from other people dropping gems on you. Okay. Dro- dropping nuggets on you. Um, elder people, people in your same profession, people that's been in your shoes before, like all of that information and how you absorb that mm-hmm. will, will, will play a huge role. Mm. Play a huge role yeah. because you 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 need that those other sources, man. Like you, and, and you need to trust. You you have to have a level of vulnerability to, to trust the other sources. Okay, because you, you've been. Everyone's telling you you're the leader, you're the man, you know what I mean. So now it's kind of hard to listen to other people at a certain mm-hmm. point because you you stop trusting. Like you get a small circle, mm-hmm. right? And you know you got your, your family unit and you got your couple of advisors that you listen to that your parents don't even know. Okay. We, we all have, we got a man that we can go. Hey man, listen, <laughs> I need to talk to you. I can't okay. talk to them over there. Uh-huh. I need to talk to you. So it it, it is a level of, of vulnerability there and, and, and being able to have somebody that you can listen to, that, okay. that you allow to, to, to be in your ear mm. on a positive level. Now, let me ask you that question too. Should that person, I know sometimes some people will have somebody vet their, their partners. Yeah. You know, you'll have somebody else check check your partners out. You know what I mean? To make sure, make sure that your partners is, is straight. Sometimes, you know, in, in jobs they call it background check, right? If I'm gonna hire somebody for the job, I have another company do a background check on them. Um, we're gonna take a commercial because right after this commercial break, we want I want to talk about that. We're gonna talk about auditing your partnerships, auditing your relationships. Right after this commercial, gotta pay some bills. From my experience, the ball goes flat for everyone, and many of these athletes aren't prepared. The biggest thing for college athletes that I've seen and that I've experienced is really maintaining that scholarship. You know, there's no such thing as a four-year scholarship. I never knew that before. As far as the college process, it would be a benefit if coaches were able to educate me on the process. So that's something that I'm finding out that we're having to do on our own. I wish there was an app that could walk me through the NCAA Clearinghouse. I find myself always wanting to rely on coaches. I don't want to do that. I want to be able to do it myself and help my son through his journey on the field and off the field. When I was in school, it always felt like my parents were nagging me about my grades. I had the fastest track time in the district, so I just knew I was going to get a scholarship. When it didn't happen, I was devastated. Not only was my sports career over, but I was also not accepted into my college of choice. If I had an app that would teach me about sports, I would love it. Whether you like it or not, sports is a big part of our lives. In the U.S. alone, 36.2 million students, grades K through 12, participated in sports for 2016. Did you know that high school participation has increased for 28 straight years. Youth athletics is now big business and is estimated to generate over $15 billion in 2017. The time and financial commitment to compete and succeed is greater than ever before. Unfortunately, three decades later, the same question remains. Why are so many athletes continuing to fail? Welcome to Smart Jock, the premier youth athletic company. 
At Smart Doc, our dedicated team has created the perfect blend of new technology, education, and real life experiences to revolutionize the world of sports. Our company's mission is to make every athlete better. A few of our products and services include Smart Jock Apps, Smart Jock IQ, Smart Jock Workshops, Smart Jock Online Classes, and Smart Jock Media. We need your help to bring this to life. So many families are in need of Smart Jock and they don't even know it. We can't do it without you, the fans, to give us that boost to get started. It's kind of like having the home field advantage. Your donations matter and every dollar makes a difference. To support our team, visit www.smartjock.net. That's www.smartjock.net. Remember, Smart Jock is not just a slogan, it's a way of life. Hey everyone, welcome back to I Am The CEO Show. I am your co-host, Eric Robinson, a.k.a. The Soul Motivator. And today, I'm joined by my co-host... Mr. James Burrell, a.k.a. The Professor. And ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by this young man, dynamite student athlete at Hampton University, quarterback D. Isaiah Robinson. Isaiah, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being on. Isaiah, you've been letting people learn, know the insights of um, being a collegiate athlete. Um, being a collegiate athlete at the D1, the highest level right now, um, and you've done it. And for those who don't know, you had a background. You was a state champ. You won a championship in, in boys club. Yes, sir. Um, Maryland state championship in the boys club. Then you won a state championship in high school. Yes. Okay. Um, and then you came in college and took the, uh, the top division FCS school to a championship in, in University of Maine last year, right? Yes, sir. Um, in those final four team. So... Having been on a championship team, you, you know a little bit about team building, I would say, right? Yes, I do. Now, we've been talking about, you've been sharing some wisdom on team building, but let's talk about this auditing your team. You know, Professor, you mentioned that earlier today. Sometimes you have a team and your partnerships, you got to sit back and audit them and kind of say, like, we've been doing business this way, we've been in a relationship this way, but maybe today I might have to take another look at that. How important, Professor, is it to come back and check and audit your, your relationships and partnerships? It is. It's, it's like preventative maintenance. It's preventative okay. maintenance for your for your for your life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it goes beyond business. You 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 reevaluate in the situation. It's like it's like an upgrade. Okay. It's like an upgrade to your phone. Okay. Mm -hmm. You sometimes you got automatic upgrades that's just gonna mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes you gotta manually go in there and do something sometimes. Sometimes Things mm -hmm. require you to press a button, right? Yeah, yeah. And to update that mm -hmm. so it can work at its most optimum ability. Yes. Well, that's how your partnerships, if you're going to have a successful partnership, that's how your partnership is have to, going to have to be audited. You're mm -hmm. going to have to go through and make sure that it's up to date mm -hmm. because okay. just like everything else, it goes through changes. Yeah. Right? So we, we got to make sure that our partnerships, relationships, mm -hmm. friendships, all go through the auditing process so... I can know now because Isaiah's not the same guy he was four years ago. Mm -hmm. So I need to meet him on a level where he is right now. Okay. I can't assume that our old agreement is still valid four years later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You follow me? So I might need to say, hey, we still good with this? Mm -hmm. Now Maybe my role is different now four years later. So you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, I don't want to have, I don't want to play the old role right. in the new system. Does that, that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. That 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 that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, Isaiah, and let's talk about like a with sports. I'm gonna talk about with sports. I know you coaching staff. Y'all do a lot of y'all go through a lot of film sessions. What's a day like as a um, a typical day as a college athlete? Can you walk us through the life and the day as a college athlete? So the day in life of a college athlete. Usually we have workouts at eight o'clock in the morning. It's different lift times from seven to nine. We work out for an hour. Then we'll have class from 9 to 1. Then we have to go get food, go eat, and then we'll have lift. And uh, Actually, then we'll have practice. And before practice, we have film sessions, watch um, practice the day before yesterday, and just look at film of the team we're playing. After that, we go out to practice, probably get out of practice around 6 or 7, and we got to go get food again. And then that's when we have time to study. Uh, that's when our free time. So we don't get freed up until about 8 o'clock at night. Freed up at 8 o'clock at night. Your body's tired. 
And did I hear you say that you're now, y'all go over to film from the, the day before his practice? Yes, sir. So they filmed the practices? Yes, they film every practice, every angle. We need to look at everything, so everything is getting filmed. Okay, because I want to now talk about this auditing now. See, so in, in, in football and sports, you're constantly looking at yesterday's practice. So you're constantly updating, you're constantly working, and you're constantly, the auditing is happening all the time. All the time. But now, let's talk about your relationships off the field. Mm-hmm. How often do you audit your relationships and friendships? And is that something, do you think the average person, or let's say the average um, student you come across, do you think they're really auditing their relationships and friendships all the time? No, because personally, I need to audit some friends too. So <laughs> I know the average person not auditing every friend. Yeah, yeah, you know. And, and I'll say that, you know, sometimes we got a relationship. I know at one point I told y'all, this is my son, but you're now 21 years old. Mm -hmm. And the relationship we had, You've been away in college for for three years. It's James, brother, you know, just going that that going away. And James tells me all the times, so Eric, all the bro, time, Eric, man, <laughs> bro, all you, the you, time. You, you ain't talking to the young Isaiah. He was eighteen when he was home. That was before he went away. It's not the same. It's not the same person. Um, how do you? How then? Hmm. I don't know. How do you go about starting an auditing process? To, to, and again, we figured this out by default the other day. The, the best way is to have that communication about what it is that you, where you are, like what what are our roles. Okay. Like it has it has to be redefined. You know, we have to come back and say, "Hey, who are you now, Isaiah?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's real. It's, it's a it's it's like a reintroduction. Yeah. And we just did that as a group the other day. Mm -hmm. James, tell me a little bit about your, your scrimps. Now, I guarantee you asked me that question four years ago, I'd have had a totally different answers mm. because I've changed. And we've been partners for about over eight years. We've been partners the whole time, but yeah. I'm still not the same person I was four years ago. Yeah. And if I'm doing my job, I won't be the same person tomorrow that I am today because hopefully I learned something from this session. So I, yeah. I'm going to always be in constant movement. So that's why it's always important to have those Stop the wrong way and say, hey, you moving, I'm moving. Are we still moving together? Mm. Make makes sense? I, I see yeah. you moving over there. Right. I see you growing. So I, I can't come with the approach. Like, I, I used to talk to you a certain way when you was under 18. Mm -hmm. But now that I see you, I can't talk to you like that no more. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, my, learned, I learned that quicker. <laughs> yeah. So my Get role... I said, like, oh, now make like My role bigger. had to change. Mm -hmm. I had to adapt my role or it would have been an uncomfortable scenario yo, for you to be like, man, who this dude talking to? I'm a I'm grown man. Right. So yeah. it's, it's you, you, again, but understanding that, you know, I have to reevaluate that. So it's that it's the constant, it doesn't really stop. Mm -hmm. And a and, and and good leader, in my opinion, takes that time out to make sure that those relationships are still intact and updated. Mm. Yeah. Because everybody's moving, man. Like every, and we are not moving at the same pace. So it's important to say, hey, we, you still with me? You still with me? Y'all still mm -hmm. with me? You still with me? So it's, you, you follow me? Because we, we're individuals, but even though we're partners, we're still individual people. Right. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's the element that we all have to, because I'm a guy, and you're a guy, and you're a guy, don't mean we all going to agree on the same things. That You right. know, that's so true. And I realize that sometimes, James, that, you know, it comes down to you got to look at your business plan. What, what's, what's my agreement? What's my plan? Where am I trying to go? And let me ask you this question, Isaiah, then. Do you have mapped out where you're trying to go in writing? You know, is, is, there, is there a map somewhere that you can say, this is where I'm trying to go, so now when I do my audit, and that's what most people got to realize, mm. if you don't have that business plan, you don't have the roadmap, your relationship should have a business plan sometimes. Where are we trying to go? I know in my bedroom, my wife got a vision board of where she wants. You know, I mean, I can look back at the old vision board. She wanted the kids to go to college. Well, guess what? They they, they, they went to college. We still got one more coming coming through. There was an old vision board. She wanted this. We wanted that. So there was the relationship where we want to go. Um, if you don't know that plan, it's kind of hard to, what are you auditing against? So I'm going to ask you this question. Now, have you thought about, do you have a plan mapped out where you want to go? And have you matched, I know you said you got to audit to some of your friends, mm -hmm. but where do you see, I'm going to give I'm going to ask you this question. I'm going to give you a roadmap. This is what you might want to do. Chart down where you want to go, okay? Mm -hmm. 
and then sit there and, and, and find out, does this person still line up to where I want to go? I got to audit my friendship because, and it doesn't make them bad friendships. It's just there's different levels of friendship. Some people have, uh, you know, they may have acquaintances. Some people, you know, we, we're really close. There's, you know, some, you know, and I got to decide, and it's not bad. I think sometimes as we transition to adulthood, sometimes that's a hard, that's a hard pill to swallow because when you start saying, man, this, this is my man's, but my man's ain't trying to go over here and it's, he's not part of that roadmap. You know, it can be a relationship, female, male relationship, whatever. We're trying to do this, but I realized that person's not trying to go where I'm trying to go get to. You know, and and, and that's, that's, that's my advice to you, Isaiah, because you're going to have a lot of people trying to come at you. You're going to have a lot of people in your ear. A lot of people are going to want access to you. And you got to know what's your map, where you're trying to go. Mm. Okay. You got to know what's your map, where you're trying to go. And I would just say to add to that, when you, when you, it's important to not only know where you're going, mm -hmm. but have an idea in your head who you want to go with you because you're not going to do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. Give me that next slide. We can, we can close out there. If you can give me the next slide right here. If you can give me the next slide. We can really close up. Give me that one last slide for me. One more, go on, one more back. Building your dream team. Ladies and gentlemen, as we close with this, building your dream team. And Isaiah, on the way up here, you asked me an important question. You said, how do you, how do you go about building your dream team? So ladies and gentlemen, that, that, that I want to share, share with you. Some of y'all out there in your business, you're trying to get your business to this next level. You're trying to increase your sales. You're trying to increase your volume. The CEO Sales Academy, we're here to help you with that. We're going to help, help you take your business to the next level. CEO Sales Academy, we're coming out, James. we got a conference we're going to do in February. You're going to want to be part of it. But building your dream team, getting on the shows like this, watching, being a part of this, is helping part of your dream team. But part of building your dream team, James, I think a big piece comes to having a mentorship. And I don't know if you realize this, Isaiah, talking to you, and we're closing up, you have a phenomenal dream team of mentors. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, um, you have a great a great group of mentors. You know, one of the top quarterback coaches in the country, George Whitfield. You pick up the phone, call him. Another top quarterback coach, Bryson Spinner. He got two people in the draft on, uh, right now. One at the Redskins, one at the Ravens. Those two quarterbacks, you train with them all the time. Those players, the coaches you've been around, you have a really great, successful dream team to help you the mission you want to go later on next week ladies and gentlemen we're going to talk to you about how to utilize your dream team james i know we got to run but do you see most people really utilizing the dream team they got around them no they 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 think it's about themselves and the solo they don't really understand the importance of the dream team underestimate it a lot big time Big time. And I'm glad we're going to talk about that on, on the next show because I want to use LeBron as an example because he knew what his team wanted to look like in high school. Executed that to perfection. He knew what his dream team looked like when it's in high school yes. and executed the plan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Zay, any last words to the people out there looking? Uh, never stop chasing your dream. And thank you guys for having me. Thank you for being on the show, brother. I, I really appreciate you coming out. Appreciate it, brother. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, tune in next week. We got a dynamite, some dynamite guests. This is going to be a hard show to follow. See y'all next week. Oh, hold on. We got something for y'all. We got, we got something for y'all. Hold on. We got two tickets. Two tickets. Just came off the press. We had a guest last week, Dr. Um, Malcolm Beach. He was the founder of Foxtrap. Some of y'all knew Foxtrap in D.C. But there's a Foxtrap reunion Tuesday, December 23rd. These are $50 tickets. If you're going to go Tuesday, December 3rd, December 3rd, from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m., the Fox Trap Reunion, Fox Trap Forever, it's going to be at the Silver Spring Convention Center, the Silver Spring Civic Center, Silver Spring, Maryland. If you want to go, text Fox Trap. That's F-O-X-T-R-A-P-P. -P. 
You can get them. If you don't get them, Fox Trap Forever. That's F O X T R A P P E Forever.org. Fox Trap Forever.org. But comment Fox Trap. The first two people will get these tickets. First two people to comment Fox Trap will get these tickets. Fox Trap. Comment Fox Trap. First two people will get these tickets. Thank you. Compliments of Dr. Malcolm Beach. Fox Trap Forever. Ladies and gentlemen, next week, don't miss this show. It's going to be on fire. Believe it.